All right, good morning, everybody. It's Monday, March 16th. It's just after 11 o'clock in the morning. The temperature is in the mid 50s. The weather bug app says 55 for Jacksonville, North Carolina. However, it's always typically a little cooler over at our house. And the humidity is about 57%. So just wanna go over some instructions from the vaporizing wand. Uh, let's see, quarter teaspoon per brood box. We do have one single and then the rest are double, so it says no more than half a teaspoon of oxalic acid. It typically takes two to five minutes for sublimation, that's the technical term, not vaporizing. It does say to prepare the beehives by removing the honey supers, which I do have supers on, so I'll do that here shortly. And then it says to leave the wand in the hive after disconnecting the terminals for 10 minutes and of course uh, does it say yeah it has directions in here for the cloth and eh, just any old towel really will do so you'll see here in a second put the wand in connect the batteries start your timer I'm gonna let it run for about seven minutes based off some other research I've done block the entrance with any old towel and then disconnect the batteries for 10 minutes so the pros to this, the advantages, I haven't discussed that yet. It is very cost effective, so just like everything else with beekeeping, there's some initial cost up front. The wand, uh, about 60 bucks. Respirator is about 30, and then two pounds of axilla acid, oxalic acid is about $14. So right there, you're just around 100 bucks. However, two pounds of axilic acid can treat, depending how many hives you have, can you can basically treat your hives quite a few times versus say something like Apivar, which I've used in the past, which comes in a 10 pack and it calls for two strips per brood box. So if you have a double brood box chamber, you know, there you are at four strips, basically about half a pack and a 10 pack off the top of my mind, going off memory, it's about 40 bucks. So oxalic acid, granted the pros, cost effective, the cons, it does take a little bit to treat each hive versus something like Apivar. The advantages to that, you simply put two strips in each brew box and you let it go for a max of, I think 45 days or so. The cons is it definitely costs a bit more. So like usual, enough of me yapping. Let me get a few things prepared. I need to light the smoker just to have that on hand. Start down at hive number one remove the honey super and then get a few things going with the vaporizer as far as positioning the battery, getting the oxalic acid uh, ready and putting on my respirator. So I'm gonna do a few things off camera and then when we come back, we will be ready to treat hive number one. All right, so for a single brood chamber, That's all it takes. Put a teaspoon. Just gonna slide this in. I'm sure the bees will love this. And then let's block the entrance. So the cool thing about this, I treated it this way a few years back. I think my first year actually, and uh, switched over to Apivar since because it was easier. But having a few hot, few more hives now. This is the more cost-effective way to go. All right, it is hooked up to the battery. I'm gonna start down, or start the countdown. There you go, seven minutes. I'll keep an eye on that. We'll just let the camera roll the whole time. Cool thing about this is in no time at all, we'll get to see the amount of field bees returning. And before I forget, let me put on my respirator.
All right, that's it for the actual vaporizing. So now disconnected the battery and 10 minutes for it to cool down. So quick look, the wand just get disconnected from the battery and we'll come back in 10 minutes, pull out the wand. All the oxalic acid should be sublimated or vaporized off and then we'll move on to the next hive. All right, here we are over at hive number two, which is a double deep. So I'll put half a teaspoon of oxalic acid on the wand, insert it in the hive, block the entrance with the towel, same procedure as hive number one. But with this one being a double deep, we'll probably see the true foraging force here gather at the entrance because it's blocked in a matter of no time. Smoke them down a little, try and get them to go in the hive. Alright, half a teaspoon, going in. I did not like that. You block the entrance. Connect it to the battery. Start our timer. Here's the full seven minutes. Just switch over to a ten minute timer. Disconnect to the battery. And let the wand cool down. So in the meantime, we're going to put hive number one super back on. And it'll be back in a little bit. It's kind of interesting to see the bees looking for the other entrance. I slid the telescoping cover back to block that entrance as well but a pretty cool side effect to blocking the entrance like this is seeing the different shades of pollen they're bringing in so we got some yellow some orange some brighter orange so the foraging bees are definitely doing their job they're on a pollen source here in eastern North Carolina all right, be back in a little bit. Well, we're back over here at hive number one. <clears throat> Let's take a look and see uh, the aftermath of treating. I don't think anything's gonna look any different, but since I have to put the super back on. Ooh, look at that. Okay, well, that was a little mistaken. It definitely drove all the bees far away from what was going on and push them up into the uh, inner cover. So, that's kind of cool, I guess. All right, well, things are back to normal. I imagine they'll continue to move up. Just put the super back on. Slide the inner cover back on and the telescoping cover. And try not to disturb them anymore. So have number two is in the cool down phase, probably has about six to seven minutes left. We'll take a look at the aftermath of that one as well and see how that looks here in a few minutes. So it's been the full 10 minutes. I'll remove the towel on the front here in a second, but yeah, that's what happens. Seems to push all the bees up into the top box. Can't blame them. They're just trying to get away from the change that's happened. Let me get my smoke and smoke them back in a little bit. At least out of the way. Uh. 
put the supers back on. All right, hive number two is done. I'm not going to show you all the hives just because the process is the same and it's not exactly the most uh, entertaining thing, but it is time consuming, that's for sure. Quick look down the line. So hive one is done. Hive number two, as you can see, a whole bunch of commotion. I'll just set the towel aside. Push the bees off the handle. Slide that out. Done. I got three and fours. Super's already pulled off a little bit. Quick shot of hive number two again. It only take them a matter of minutes to settle back in. And you can come out later in the afternoon and you wouldn't know if any anything happened or not. As you can see with hive number one, it's been about 20 minutes since I treated them. And all is well. Not the most exciting video, but I had a few people on Instagram, I believe, ask how I treat. So I figured I'd share. It is time consuming, that's for sure. It's definitely cost effective. Wearing a respirator isn't necessarily the funnest thing in the world either. All right, timer just went off. The one has cooled down for 10 minutes. Let's take the lid off. Same thing. He's trying to get away from what's going on. Put the super back on and move on to the next hive. Let them get back to work. There's the timer. I'll take the towel off first this time. Shake some of the bees off. Set that aside. Let's put the camera on top of a, this is just an empty box in between three and four. Get it angled down and, and leveled just to show you how this hive reacted. I imagine just like the, uh, the rest of the hive hives. All the bees will be pushed to the top here. Doesn't seem like that many. <clears throat> and there's the rest of them. Right, let's get the super back on. Try not to squish too many bees. A whole bunch of them on the inside of the inner cover. And that's that. 
So, depending how many hives you have, will depend how long it takes. It is time consuming, that's for sure, but very cost effective, as I previously said. Thanks for watching, everybody. That's series number one. So to completely treat your hives for mites, you want to do this in three separate steps, about a week apart. So it does take the course of three weeks to thoroughly treat your hives. However, I did read recently that most of the mite count drop, the largest drop in mites happens after the first treatment. So I guess what I'm trying to get at is if you can't get around to treating your hives three separate times, doing it at least one time should yield positive results as far as reducing your mite count. However, I plan on treating next week and the week after for a series of three times to completely treat for mites. The idea with that is brood's always in different stages and by treating over the course of three weeks, you should be able to get most of the mites in the cells and the brood, so on and so forth. Thanks for watching the channel, everybody. I can't wait to get this respirator off. It is difficult to talk with it for extended periods of time. So again, thanks for watching the channel. Please subscribe, hit the bell to receive notifications. I won't be posting the additional videos because it's all the same. Just wanted to show a few of our followers and subscribers how we treat for mites here. All right, that's it for today.